Hello everyone, uh, this is Ori Bloop. Welcome back to another uh, Game Builder Garage tutorial. Now, before we begin this tutorial, uh, I would like to say thank you guys for uh, making me reach a thousand subscribers. Honestly, that is a giant milestone for me. I've never <laughs> reached a thousand subscribers, uh, you know, in for my past channels or, or honestly on any account. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> I know, I know it's kind of crazy, but um, I'm really happy about that, and I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this content and finding it really helpful. Um, and honestly, I, I've already passed that, so that's already kind of crazy for me to begin with, too. Um, but I will be having a celebratory uh, video uh, coming up on my channel probably pretty soon, so uh, I would watch out for that, guys. But um, let's just get right into today's tutorial. So. A lot of people have been suggesting this, but this is a flashlight in Game Builder Garage. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but uh, basically, you know, I'll, I'll show you guys. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So um, we're going to go to edit and we're going to be working with a uh, first person camera. So we're going to scale up our person. Uh, I have had people say to not include this. Um, segment where I make the person because I've made it so many times at this point that people can go to my you know past videos um, but today I'm just gonna be doing this one uh, just because I haven't made a first person um, in a while so um, but I will be removing this segment off my YouTube uh, tutorials because I will be uh, linking a uh, the camera video that I made um, if you guys watched that already but uh, this is how you make a first person camera. It's pretty simple. Um, in the person, we're gonna turn off visible. And if we go ahead and look in the game, uh, it looks all good. You can see that we have a perfect first person camera. Um, I'm just gonna scale my player down a little bit um, just to see how that looks. Yeah, that's a lot better. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and actually uh, make the flashlight. So. Uh, what we're going to grab is uh, go to game screen slash camera first person and we're going to get our head node on. Uh, I found this to be the most effective just because uh, we want the flashlight to follow our camera basically. So um, I think that works the best. So if you guys don't know already, um, we don't have like a an actual light object in this game. What we do is we go to objects, uh, special objects, effects, and we have our light effect. Um, if you guys haven't worked with the light effect before, um, I'll show you how uh, generally people use them. Uh, usually when you play it, it will come on screen like that. If you guys saw that, if we play it again, it's like a white light on the screen. But actually, uh, we can go ahead and change the properties of the um, light, of the light effect, and make it so that it sh appears in the world like a flashlight. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that constant for right now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just connect this straight to our head um, node on. Uh, we can scale this light up a little bit. I'll, I'll explain why um, we're scaling it up. But if we go into the settings for the effect, uh, we're going to go ahead and change it to uh, while not zero. Because this will basically mean when it's not zero or when we're constantly putting an input into it, it will always stay on. Um, and then for the effect location, um, if you guys just saw, we did it on the camera. It just showed a white light on the camera, but we're going to be affecting the world with the camera. Um, and then for the connection point, the best way I found this uh, to do this is to do Z minus for the own connection point, And then the target connection point will stay at center. Um, so if we go just like that, if we go in the game, uh, you can't really see anything because we haven't changed the world um, yet to pitch black. Um, so you'll be able to see it better. Oh, also, we didn't add a, a constant to this. So we're going to go ahead and um, just add that real quick. Uh, but if we go to objects world, uh, we can make the world pitch black. And that's what works the best. You can change the lighting so that you have different lighting. Uh, but we're going to go with pitch black just because this is a tutorial. Um, so if we go ahead and look in game, uh, there we go. We have a working flashlight. So if we move our camera around... Um, it works perfectly fine. The only thing that I found uh, that you could say is a problem is if you look all the way down, uh, the camera starts clipping into the ground or in the world, and 
you can't it, like it starts turning black um there is probably a way to fix this and i think if you lock your uh your y position you'll be able to to fix this really easily but um i don't think it's really that big of a problem because you could still play um normally and uh, you guys can also experiment with the light effect by changing the distance. So if you make it really, really big, um, the light object, if you look in the game, you can see that um, we, we have like a really big, um, you know, draw distance, basically. We could see um, very far in our game or in our world um, if we do that. Uh, but I think I'm going to just scale it down um, in just a little bit, see how that looks. Yeah, I, I kind of like that, um, but I could end the tutorial now, but I'm going to show you guys how to uh, make the light turn on and off with a button press. So we're going to go ahead and uh, remove that constant like I just did. And um, for the button press, we're going to go ahead and uh, get the R button. So we could just uh, add this just like that. But what will happen is uh, if we press R, it will only stay on for a little bit just because uh, we're only giving it a short amount of time uh, to press R. But we're not going to do that. Um, what we're going to do is first we're going to take our uh, flag. And I haven't worked with the flag yet, but what it does is uh, it could detect on and off and it will send an output depending on on and off. So if we go ahead and connect our R button to on and connect it like that, if we go ahead and look in the game, our camera is currently off, but if we press R, it will turn on just like that. Um, but the only problem is if we press R again, it will uh, remain on and we want to change that. So if we press R again, it will go ahead and turn off uh, just like a flashlight would work um, in real life. So if we go to edit, um, we're going to go ahead and change this a little bit. So uh, we're going to disconnect this and move this over to the side. Um, we're going to want a uh, counter node on. And we're going to go ahead and just connect that to on. Um, and then for our R button, we're going to do uh, connect this to count up. So for the counter, we're going to have to change some attributes to it. But uh, we're going to change it to loop, uh, count range to 2, and then uh, count timing on change from zero. So I'll kind of explain uh, the best I can, but basically um, our looping is from, from basically zero to two. So it's only going from one to zero, um, if that makes sense, because two um, wouldn't count. So basically it's either giving us an input of one or an input of zero. And then on change from zero, uh, basically means like you know it's it's changing from from zero itself so um what that does is if we press r it will send an output of one and if we press r again it's looping it will go back to zero so we can do this countless times and it will be in that same loop in that same loop from zero to two um so we'll get that constant uh you know on and off but the only problem is uh you know, we have this off, but we can't just connect it because it's already connected to our on. So we need to make a way, a separate way of uh, turning the flashlight off. So if we go ahead and go to middle comparison and get our uh, equal sign out, we can connect uh, this zero to here uh, to the first input. And then we can go ahead and connect our result to off. So basically now what we have to do is uh, it's not comparing to anything yet. So what we want it to do is uh, compare to a zero. And I'll explain why. Um, so if we change that just to zero and connect that just like that, basically, um, I'll show you what, what this does now. So if we go ahead and press R, it will uh, give an output of one. So if we press R, it will send it through here and then it will just turn automatically on and turn our light on. Um, but if we have an output of zero, if we were to turn it off, then that zero will come down here. And because it's comparing itself to the constant of zero, basically it, 
it's equal to each other. So it will send one and then it will give an output to our off button and that will turn the flashlight off. So basically that's how the on and off feature works, um, if that makes sense to you guys. But if we go into uh, play mode, we can see if we press R once, we have our uh, perfectly functioning flashlight, uh, flashlight. And then if we press R again, it's basically in that loop. So it's uh, turning the output to zero. So now uh, we can't see anything and we can press it again. And you can do that whole process. You can turn it on and off as much as you want. Um, I know you guys have been suggesting that the on and off feature, um, but we can go to remove that little white box. We can go to effect um, light and change that property to um, invisible. So now if we go in the game, uh, it's pitch black. So if we uh, press R, we have our little flashlight. We can go around um, and then for whatever reason, we can turn it off. Um, you guys could easily implement like a timer system where after a, a couple of amount of seconds, it will turn automatically off or, you know, if you're running out of battery for the flashlight. Um, so this could be really good for like horror games, definitely. Um, but hopefully uh, this tutorial was easy to follow along. I know it was kind of difficult with this whole um, thing because I, I did make this up, so I'm not... Um, entirely sure honestly yet of how it 100% works but I think I explained it kind of well um but yeah I'm hopefully you guys found this video helpful and uh thank you again for the a thousand subs I will be putting uh the celebratory video on my channel uh but thanks for watching guys all right bye bye